happening? Welcome to our Wednesday Yachting Luncheon. It's always beautiful to be here and look out the windows of our magical grill room. Holy moly. And the first thing I get to do is introduce the first female Commodore of the St. Francis Yacht Club, Teresa Brandner. Teresa, come on up. Thank you, Ron. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, members and guests, uh, those of you who are in the room and those of you who are viewing online. And just another wonderful speaker in our series, but, but today is actually really special. Um, this is, a, 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 I guess, a matter close to our hearts. We have a great sense of pride. And I, I was just talking to the guys at the table that every time a military person walks in the front door, I just I feel a little bit safer. So um, there's going to be a great story today. And hopefully it's not too much of a tearjerker, but I'm really looking forward to it. So welcome to you and your, your uh, crew that you've brought with you. I'm looking forward to today's presentation. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. A little bit about future speakers. Let's see, if we look out to um, March, Ron Young, spelled Y-E-U-N-G, Dr. Distinguished Professor Ron Young will be here to talk all about wind-powered, um, tall, like 400 foot tall, uh, new kinds of windmills that are floating in the North Atlantic these days. They're in deep water so they don't go down to the bottom, they're not. Um, they're literally floating. So he'll be here to talk all about um, energy wave and um, other energy production that's all green. Um, then let's see, we're going to talk in the uh, March area as well. We're going to have a St. Francis Yacht Club in the 50s talk. So we'll have um, several members who are who joined and were members in the 50s, talk all about St. Francis in the 50s. Dewey Hines will be one of the speakers, Packy Davis, and others. We can't seem to get Mr. John Cumberpatch to say yes yet, but he was here beginning in the 50s, so we might, we might prevail anyway. Um, then let's see, we're all paying attention to the California Delta, and we'll hear more about the Delta today. And in the California Delta, um, We've got a, a broad yachting history, so we're going to have Bill Wells come and give us a history of yachting in the California Delta, which would be terrific. Um, then we will have, um, in the end of January, Bill Chrysler will be here to talk about the St. Francis Sailing Foundation. Paul Heineken will be here to talk all about the year ahead, 2019. Jim Hancock will be here to talk about the San Francisco Sailing Science Center. And uh, November, the January the 9th, we'll have the, uh, the uh, history of Tinsley. Uh, we have five Tinsley founding families, Ed Bravelli, Buzz Cox, Barbara Gilmore, Joe Peatman, and Judy Wall will be here to talk all about uh, the beginnings of Tinsley, uh, which will be terrific. And then uh, the father-son luncheon will be on Jan December 19th. And uh, on December 12th, Gary Jobs will be here to talk all about his latest 19th of his latest books on yachting. And next week, we'll get to hear from Christy Nelson, who wrote a book all about Treasure Island, this beautiful jewel that's at the other end of the bay, and how the uh, World's Fair in 1939 uh, had some romantic and some incredible espionage wrapped up in its uh, development and founding. S nobody even knows the story, so she's here to talk all about it. A little bit about our speaker today. So we have this incredible broad range in getting 52 speakers a year of speakers. And we get these ideas for speakers from our membership uh, largely. People come up and call, phone me, and stop me in the club and say, how about this person, how about that person? Our speaker today, um, was brought to us by Michael Diepenbach. Michael at the table here. Michael, thank you, buddy. <laughs> Michael, a very thoughtful member, pointed out to me a year ago, he said, 10 months ago, he said, this is a really interesting speaker. He's got an interesting story, and he's got an interesting cause. Michael is a generous contributor to his cause and to, uh, to the activities of our speaker today, so I want to thank uh, the source of our talk today. Our speaker started in um, Kazakhstan, basically um, uh, the son, the second of six children, 
Uh, his father was in the Russian, he was a Russian special ops guy. So all the time our speaker's growing up, he's got a father who's in the Russian special ops as his beginnings. Moves to California at age eight, moves to America and California at age eight. Actually gets on a bay liner in the Delta at age 15. Uh, starts water skiing and doing all kinds of physical things up there. Has spent lots of time fishing in the Delta, catching sturgeon and salmon. Catching a salmon in the Delta is not easy, but as he said, as if you know when they're running, that counts for a lot. Um, in high school, he became very, very uh, a significant athlete in the wrestling team. Uh, went on to the regionals, then the nationals, then the uh, toured in Japan uh, as a as a champion wrestler. Um, went off to Heald College, got a technical degree at Heald College, and then signed up for the army. Got in the army, then signed up for airborne then signed up for the Rangers, did all that in his first year while he was in the Army, and then he went off to Iraq. Two tours in Iraq, one tour in Afghanistan, came back, and as he came back, <clears throat> he was a very accomplished Ranger, so he competed in the best Ranger competition. These are 30 teams of two who compete to, who, be, who would be the very best Ranger, and he won best Ranger competition, and he became <clears throat> best Ranger in the world. That's a heck of an accomplishment. Um, in 07, got out of the military and immediately went back to fighting. But in this case, professional fighting, mixed martial arts. And you don't win a lot of prize money in mixed martial arts. One to 2,000 bucks when you'd win a, a meet back in those days. Three or four fights a year. And um, in his six bouts, he has four victories and two losses. All this time, he's thinking to himself, how do I get this exciting feeling of being part of a team and serving my community? So he joins in 07, the San Mateo Police Department, and um, uh, begins working with young people in the San Mateo Police Department, and uh, in 15, creates Ranger Road. Ranger Road is a transitionary uh, opportunity for post-military personnel to transition into a civilian role, and they'll tell you all about it. Uh, during this time, he also uh, gets selected and becomes part of the Street Crime Reduction Unit. So he's used to working with young people and used to working with um, military folks and helping them find purpose in their lives. So we often have speakers come and talk to us about significant achievements, but we seldom have someone come and talk to us about achievements he's um, had that actually contribute to the broader community. So with um, uh, lots of enthusiasm, I want to welcome to the stage uh, Mikhail Venikoff. Mikhail, come on up for Ranger Road. And Mikhail's going to bring a few of his colleagues with him. Hey, thank you guys very much. Can everybody hear me? All right. I make a couple adjustments here. How's everybody's meal? Pretty good? Uh, come on over here. So I'm going to introduce you guys to some of my friends, uh, Jordan Stevenson and Alex Waregi, probably pronouncing it wrong. But um, thank you very much for the kind, kind words. Uh, my name is Mikhail Venikov, and I'll go into a little bit of detail about Ranger Road and how, uh, how and why we started um, our nonprofit. Um, a little bit about Ranger Road, like was already mentioned before, I, I served in the military, got into, a, after getting out of the military, got into a law enforcement, mixed martial arts, and that sort of thing. Uh, while doing that, I learned and I found um, uh, there was a little bit, something was missing. A lot of individuals who I served with in the military um, or guys that were getting out of the military would reach out to me and ask, hey, Mikhail, you have a job, you got married, it seems like you're doing something right, and we are having a hard time, hard time either getting out of the military or as they've already gone out transitioning. And I thought back, and what helped me was sports, being active, being around good people, and um, that pushed me and uh, pushed me in the right direction. So that's how Ranger Road was was born. What we do within Ranger Road is we provide services through sports and outdoor activities. We work with all branches of the military, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, National Guard. Everybody is welcome to participate. And 
uh, a big part of um, our success within Ranger Road is uh, inviting the community, uh, civilians to come together, participate, and help one another. Well, uh, um, there we go. One of the things that we do... Today is our the, annual Freedom Jump. The uh, idea there, is to get uh, veterans no and sound. the community involved, come out together, and have a good time by skydiving, some tank crushes. We get tanks out here crushing some cars, helicopter, Huey flights. We have a jump house for kids. One of my buddies asked me if I'd be interested in jumping out of a plane. This was like two weeks before the event. It, my background is I was in the 82nd Airborne Division for 11 years. Uh, you know, after I got hurt, I never thought I'd jump again. And three years fast forward, here I am. I'm Ranger Road is sponsoring me to jump on my own and getting my license. And here I am jumping solo now. I'm on my 12th uh, solo jump right now. It's liberating. I'm a vet myself. I served in the 2nd Ranger Battalion. A lot of vets that are my friends came out of the military with difficulties, whether it be PTSD or various types of disabilities, limb loss, and, and a lot of them have a hard time coming out of the military and adjusting to normal life. And they have a hard time because while you're in the military, you are used to a camaraderie, the, the brotherhood that you have serving overseas and, you know, especially in combat. And so we miss that coming out. So that's how Ranger Road was born. We're basically that first step for a lot of veterans to get them going in the right direction through the fun events and programs that we put together. We develop that relationship, that trust, and then they open up and tell us what other needs that they are uh, maybe lacking or what they need help in. So this is the Freedom Jump. It's one event that we do uh, once a year. We provide services for our veterans and we invite them to come out and participate. This year we did uh, our Freedom Jump and we had roughly a little bit over a thousand people that came out. We were able to sponsor 50 disabled veterans from all over America, bring them over to, to this event and participate in skydiving. Some of us might think, uh, you know, skydiving isn't for me or for, for is that partner next it's not for everybody, but uh, the fact that we get to bring everybody together and I get to seek bring, out guys invite that are civilians to come together, feeling. participate, to hang out, support one another. Got you. That is where um, where Range Road strives. And what I mean by that is we uh, start the conversations with our veterans who need assistance. Me, I'm a proud individual. I'm not going to raise my hand and ask for help. That's just not going to happen. And most of and the same thing with, with, with uh, Jordan and Alex for the most part. But coming together, participating, having fun, and um, being around a good group of people, we're able to open up and um, – relay the other, um, you know, maybe factors or things that we're struggling in. Maybe some of the veterans need assistance in counseling or housing or, or uh, they need a job. And what we do with those veterans, we uh, uh, pull them out and talk to them and streamline them to other nonprofits that focus particularly on the need that they have um, need help in. Um, besides, besides skydiving, a little bit about Ranger Road is we put together various events Throughout the year, we do scuba diving, skydiving, mountain biking, hiking, fishing, you name it, as long as it's an outdoor type activity. We try to get our veterans involved with the community coming together and participate. I may like to skydive, he likes to fish, he likes to race cars. So we try to accommodate each veteran with the uh, needs or the desires that they do have. Um, I'll let Jordan talk about um, his experiences after, after the slide. Um, and some of the other things that we, we pride uh, ourselves in within Ranger Road is we try to assist our veterans that go through our program to start and run the program or continue running the program. This here is Josh Hodlin. He's a double amputee Marine. He loves scuba diving. So we were able to uh, uh, put him through a course, and now he's an instructor, and he teaches other civilians and veterans how to scuba dive, get them scuba certified, uh, through Ranger Road Scuba. Ranger Road Motors, again, Jordan will talk a little bit about that, but he's, uh, he runs Ranger Road Motors. It's a uh, an, uh, program where we invite the community to come together. They race cars, they uh, ride motorcycles, quads, you name it. They try to get involved and, and assist those veterans that uh, like to participate in this kind of thing. Just to mention on this, uh, they, Jordan and three other uh, veterans with disabilities are going to be racing at the Sonoma Raceway this weekend at the uh, 24 Hours of Lemon. So, um, 
go Jordan, you know, things like that. And it's, it's also not only, um, it's not only therapeutic for them, but it also shows other people within the community that, you know, if you're missing a limb or if you got hurt uh, fighting for your country, there's other things that you can do and motivate individuals to continue moving forward and, and, and do the right thing and, and uh, just uh, help one another and bring that, that camaraderie, camaraderie together. Sorry about that. My Russian came out there. <laughs> uh, another program that we have, Matt Sullivan, single leg amputee, runs Range Road Swim program. Uh, they invite individuals to come to the pool. They work out. They exercise within the pool. We have guys from my gym, from Team Alpha Male, that come out and swim. And it's a phenomenal workout, and it and it's just another um, uh, event that we try to put together to broaden our, our, um, our programs and allow uh, different individuals to participate in. Uh, project moving forward. I'm trying to r rush through these kind of quick, but uh, project moving forward is okay. <laughs> uh, project moving forward is very uh, dear to all of us. Um, we we started it in Wall Street Hospital in Washington D.C. Um, Michael actually helped us uh, get this going. And what we do there is we go out to Wall Street once a month. For those that don't know what Wall Street is, it's a hospital that uh, it's a military hospital accommodates a lot of the veterans that get hurt. They go there for their treatment and um, getting them um, back into, into society. And so we go out there, we do MMA training. We do, um, as you guys can see some of the pictures, we do um, boxing, we do workouts, various types of things that we do with the, the, um, the patients at the hospital, get them out of a little bit, a little bit away from the um, hospital environment into the gym working out, feeling good about themselves, and uh, learning a little bit more maybe about their uh, abilities and what they can, really can do. And Project Moving Forward, uh, we've had great success there. Uh, the staff there, Mr. Harvey, uh, he reached out to Balboa Hospital, which is in San Diego, and so we're working on getting our program into San Diego as well. So we're, we're expanding, we're getting a lot more um, support and being able to assist more veterans and reach, reach more, uh, more families. Uh, something that we like to do within Range Road as well, this is a gentleman who lost his leg. He's not a veteran. He's actually a police officer, but the other individuals, as you can see, around are veterans. And what we try to do, just like what we're speaking about Range Road here, we try to um, go to individuals that were hurt or are struggling. We, we speak with them, um, whether it be through Ranger Road or on, or, or on their own time. They speak with them and motivate them and educate them on you know the disabilities that they may have um, recently sustained and guys like uh, Jordan and Alex are able to tell them, hey man, you lost your leg. Um, I, I lost two of my legs and I'm able to uh, still continue doing what I'm doing and, and um, there are uh, ways uh, around the disability. So it's giving back and educating the community and uh, telling them um, a little bit about their disabilities to motivate them to move forward. Men a mental mind game is very strong and being able to understand that or accept uh, what has happened and move forward is, is very strong and, and important and the gentleman here will be able to talk a little bit about that. Our mission statement bringing veterans together for physical and emotional wellness through extraordinary experiences empowering the transition to the next chapter in life. Uh, this picture here is another event or program that we put together. It's called Operation Gut Check. We bring in a, a disabled veteran and give uh, assign six to ten able-bodied individuals like you guys when you guys want to or myself and what we do is we push them through the Spartan race and uh, help them complete the race. Um, moving forward, Ranger Road is growing. Uh, we started in 2015 and we get a lot of um, a lot of uh, individuals, veterans, and their and their loved ones reaching out to us, asking for assistance, asking for help, getting involved in the, within the um, the program, and we're we're growing. We're trying to assist as many veterans as uh, financially possible. Uh, some of the veterans we are uh, churning away because of the funding or the lack of funding that we do have. For example, the Freedom Jump, we were able to sponsor 50 disabled veterans. Uh, we flew them in. Um, those that were not local put them in the hotel and uh, gave them opportunity to, to skydive. We had over 300 that applied that we were not able to um, accommodate. So that's just an example of, of uh, reaching out and, and assisting our veterans as much as we can. Um, 
this is again just a just a you know a motivational picture here. Uh, this is Mark Zambon. He's a, a veteran Marine, and uh, you know there's no limits. This guy is is awesome. He's he lost both his legs. He's an EOD guy, but he pushes forward and never complains, and always tries to um, yeah, motivate individuals. Um, as I mentioned before, we work with young veterans, old veterans. This is Grandpa Rudy. He's 105 years old today, or this this year. Uh, last year, he wanted to skydive with us. Um, wasn't able to because his doctor didn't recommend it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, very, very motivational individual. Um, uh, just wants to do stuff, wants to stay active and be part of, 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 of a group. And that's what Ranger Road is. We, we work with veterans with different disabilities, different ages. Some veterans want to uh, scuba dive, skydive. Some want to sh shoot guns. And so we try to accommodate everybody. Um, so something a little bit about Ranger Road that is uh, very important and near to us. 100% of what goes into Ranger Road goes back to our veterans. Uh, we have zero paid staff. All of us are volunteers. We're uh, motivated individuals, and we love doing what we're doing. And the reason being is because not only has Ranger Road helped us, but it also um, is a therapy, I can speak for myself, a therapy for me to be able to give back and participate and watch guys like these guys uh, doing things that, you know, some people sit back and say, hey, you know, I lost my leg, I can't do anything anymore. Well, these guys are complete opposite. Uh, Jordan will speak a little bit about his experiences, but um, being able to work out with Jordan, he's not able to use part of his body. But coming coming to the gym and working out and pushing forward and not giving up and telling me, hey, let's do another set, let's do another workout or something like that, it it. it Initially, it, it put me on the on the back burner, but it was surprising in a good way, and it's it's awesome to hear that that sort of stuff coming from individuals that are able to motivate and push other uh, subjects that are struggling uh, to the next stage. Um, something that we uh, do within Ranger Road, uh, or trying to grow, uh, we got involved with the combined federal campaign as well as the California Promise campaign trying to reach out to federal and state uh, agencies to uh, um, educate them about what we're doing um, to contribute, whether it be through volunteer work or financial assistance to, ma to make uh, what we're doing within Ranger Road possible. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let Jordan speak a little bit about his experiences within Ranger Road. Before I talk about <laughs> Ranger Road, I'll give you guys a little background on me. Uh, born and raised in Sacramento, Elk Grove, California. <clears throat> I went into the military, I became an EOD tech, I disarmed bombs for a living. And I was, I didn't get blown up, I got shot through the head. This big scar on my head is because I got, I had a bullet go through my head. Uh, completely paralyzed my right arm and my right leg. I spent two years in Palo Alto at the Palo Alto VA before I started to transition out to, to normal life and civilian life. Fortunately and thankful, and as a blessing, I ran into these guys. I actually met Alex first, and he recommended that I get a hold of Mikhail and go to a, a skydiving event, and I was able to become a part of this. One thing that I want to touch on is war is terrifying. It should be the scariest thing we've ever done. But when we're in it, we're, there, we're, not, we're not scared. We operate at night, Kyle Special Forces as, as well as Mikhail. We operate at night. These guys are actively trying to kill us. Everything they're doing is to kill us, to stop us. And we're trying to stop them, but also trying to save one another. And we're not scared because I have him next to me. I have him next to me. So we're not, we don't feel that fear because there's that trust. And when you have that trust and that relationship with one another, you can accomplish anything. So when I met these guys and I was able to do these activities, and build that relationship and that trust, now I get to be a part of Ranger Road and show guys that we can still do anything with that trust and relationship that we have with one another. So, my name is Alex Jureghi. Uh, my background is I served in the Army for 11 years. I was in the 82nd Airborne Division. Uh, for nine years when I got wounded in 2012, uh, then I did two years at Walter Reed. Uh, so I was an infantry squad at the time that I got hurt. And what I'm going to touch up on is uh, when you get hurt, you know, you're, I was 27 years old at the time, very active person, humping 100, 
pound rucksack plus, and then you get hurt and you lose both your legs, and you don't know what your future is going to look like. You don't, you're unsure of what's going to happen. And then thanks to organiz to the community and to organizations like Mikhail and Mike. Ranger Road is now able to be one of those first faces that you see in the hospital that's telling you that it's going to be okay. Not only are they telling you, then they take you to the gym and they push you through workouts and through obstacles that you, you didn't think you'd be able to do again. And so that kind of gives you a little bit of hope. And what's really special about Mikhail or Ranger Road and Mikhail is that it's not an organization that's just post 9-11. We work with Vietnam veterans. We had five Vietnam veterans that skydive with us this year. We have one that's currently getting certified because it was that adrenaline was so high and he loved it. So now he's getting certified on his own. So we work with veterans of all eras, regardless of disability, whether they're disabled or not dis or dis disabled at all. It's any veteran who's ever ever served. And so again, uh, I think the community plays a big part in our healing and. Uh, Organizations like Mikel, when they, you know, we do a Spartan race, something you'd never think you'd be able to do. It's just a hurdle, and organizations like this make you realize that you can overcome that hurdle and you move on to the next hurdle. So, thank you for having us. Yeah, like like these guys had mentioned before, um, you know, it's not Mikhail, it's Ranger Road, and it's guys like Jordan and everybody else coming together, working together. And although I don't have, you know, visual disabilities, I'm a veteran myself. And, you know, uh, there's, there's hard times. Um, I, I wear a bracelet. <laughs> these, uh, so these bracelets, they're uh, what we call KIA bracelets. And what they are, it's, it's, a, a, it's a remember your, your fallen comrades. So usually the guys who wear them are guys that we served with. And so what the, that's what these bracelets are. So. Yeah, and so uh, every, the community coming together and supporting our veterans is it, dear to our heart, and we we um, invite everybody to participate. Uh, if you want to participate through volunteer work, coming out and and even just hanging out with the guys and learning their their uh, background and what they what they've been through and accomplished is very important. And sometimes just sitting down, having a cup of coffee. I met with. Uh, Michael, we had a cup of coffee. It goes a long way. It, it really does. It shows that support that somebody does care. And our, our veterans are overseas doing, uh, you know, God's work. <laughs> and um, there are things that are happening overseas that we can't control. Individuals get hurt. And something that we, uh, we also do is a, a project I could. Alex was uh, certified. He's now a skydiver. And we have individuals that are currently at the hospital. Uh, a, a gentleman I met, Joey, he has an eight-month-old daughter. He just uh, got hurt. He lost his leg. And so his dad told me that he really wants a, uh, a rifle, uh, a tactical rifle. And so we're putting through through Project I Could, we raise funds and be able to present them with something that they've always wanted to accomplish, be or do or have. And we present that through, them, through that through Ranger Rose program. Um, wanted to thank everybody for listening to a little bit about Ranger Road. Um, again, like I mentioned before, our, our mailing address is on um, on the slide in in regards to our website. It's on there as well. Uh, thank you for your support and thank you for listening to us. Perfect. Right. Alejandro. Jordan, have seats. Yep, I will. So uh, welcome to another of our Wednesday Yachting Luncheons. Uh, we're pleased today to have Mikhail Vinikoff, the founder of Ranger Road, and two of his colleagues, Alejandro and Jordan, here with us today. Um, uh, give me a sense of the scale of Ranger Road, Mikhail. How many participants per year are participating? This is year three of, of, of Ranger Road? 
That's correct. Uh, year three, we started in 2015. Uh, we, we've grown um, at a fast rate. They, initially, we're, we anticipated to do two, maybe three events per year. The first year, we did uh, 10, 10 events. And right now, currently, we uh, as of this year, we've assisted over 2,000 veterans and their families uh, through programs and events that we put together. So Jordan, uh, we all are familiar with and have heard about the camaraderie in combat. Yeah. Talk to us about how Ranger Road activities um, give you guys satisfaction to be with each other. Talk a little bit about that, please. We spend years training with each other to go to war. So we're, we learn to have that relationship and to need that camaraderie and that friendship. So when we, and we were talking about how fast it's grown, it's grown because through word of mouth, through, through the veteran community, you, will, you know what's a good organization and what's not. So as word of mouth, we found out about Range Road and it's grown because it's a good organization. And the com camaraderie that comes with it is, it's just natural because we already know it, we already have it. So when it's introduced again, it, it's, it's, our, it's, our, it's already there. We just re we see it and it's, it builds quickly. So Alejandro, um, you were in uh, Walter Reed for two years? Yes, sir. In rehab? Yes, sir. Yeah, talk to us a little bit about the rehab process. A person loses a leg, give us a sort of like a overview of how you get back to being able to be so proficient with an artificial limb. So, uh, so at Walter Reed, um, that's where just about every amputee goes to. That's the main hub for amputees. And normally the, from there you can go to either Texas or Babo in San Diego. But um, basically, like I said, you know, whenever you, you first get hurt, Usually it's um, it's 60 days after your last surgery when you can put on pr prosthetics. In the meantime, mentally, you don't know what life is going to look like. You don't know what you're going to be able to do again, you know. So all your thoughts are negative or not necessarily negative, but it's unsure. And then you scary. And then you get, like I said, you know, you get organizations such as Mikhail that are visiting you all the time. The community plays a huge part in your mental state after you get hurt. You got a lot of organizations that come through and try to reassure you, but it, none of it is like seeing another veteran who's gone through a similar experience. So when you get veterans that are another double amputee that's going walking through there and telling you, hey, man, let's go work out. You know, you can you might not think that you can do this, but then they show you that you can do it. And it's very reassuring. So, Mikhail, give us a profile of a typical member of Ranger Road. How many participants per year uh, this year, do you think? And then give me a profile of what the average uh, one is like. Sure. Uh, Age-wise, et cetera. Sure. Uh, Ranger Road, like I mentioned before, we're all volunteers. Alex is a volunteer. Jordan, myself, we're all volunteers. And uh, we don't have a paid staff to be able to, uh, you know, say that we have 10 members we don't. We assist our veterans as they come in with their needs. For example, our Freedom Jump, we sponsored, we were able to accommodate 50 disabled veterans to be able to skydive. Although we assisted, uh, I'm sorry, assisted 50, we were able to um, include a lot more people to come in, a lot more veterans that were able to pay for themselves and participate. We had about a, a little bit over a thousand participants for that event. So uh, within Ranger Road, we have a core group of individuals like these gentlemen here and other gentlemen that have uh, participated and are helping us uh, push Ranger Road forward. We have a core group of 20. And those individuals are um, running the programs volunteering their time and, and assisting other veterans because they have gone through Ranger Road programs or events and uh, uh, have benefited from uh, the events. Um, this year, like I mentioned before, uh, we've reached out and assisted and been part of uh, veterans and their families right around uh, a little bit over 2,000 uh, veterans. And so we're growing at a fast rate, which is a good thing, but it's also a difficult thing because the lack of funding that we are currently receiving or um, the do donations coming in um, do not are not um, able to cover all of the veterans that want to participate. Like I mentioned before, although we sponsored 50 uh, veterans uh, for the Freedom Jump, we had over 300 that applied. There's an application process, and then we, we make the selection of who we can sponsor and pay for to be able to participate. Everybody else, civilians and other veterans, are required to pay for themselves if they they, uh, want to participate. What's the age range of participants? Uh, it depends. It depends on... From yeah. what to what? 105, right? 
the the average combat guy is 18 to 22 so i would say from 22 is when you get out and we have active duty the guys that are doing it from so from 22 our, our oldest is 105 that is taking part in it so but but the middle of the target is guys who are in their 30s and 40s what what do you yeah, think? Yeah. Yes, I, I would say so. And, and it also depends on the event that we're putting together. For example, mm -hmm. if it's a, it's a hunt that we're putting together, gentlemen that are a little bit older, gentlemen and, and men or, and women are able to participate that are a little bit older. Uh, Grandpa Rudy, uh, obviously he wouldn't go out and do the Spartan race um, with us, but he can do other events. And so when we have a group of individuals that would like to do something, a, a veteran group that wants to participate in an event or something, then we accommodate and organize it and make it happen to assist those, that group of individuals and then invite the community to come together and help out. So Jordan, can you remember uh, an experience you've had with a vet in Ranger Road where you can see him kind of emotionally uh, getting a charge and uh, uh, so, you know, motivation out of the experience? Yeah, I can, and hopefully he doesn't mind me speaking on his behalf. Um, I, now that I'm, I can, I'm a part of Ranger Road and he said uh, we were volunteers and we get to run part of our own programs. I'm, I've taken charge with Ranger Road Motors, which is a car, ra we, we race cars. So, so far we've done the Gambler 500 in Tennessee and we're doing the 24 Hours of Lemons in Sonoma this weekend. Uh, when we were in Tennessee, one of the, one of my co-drivers, he caught word of a gentleman that was on his team when they were deployed that had recently committed suicide while he was, and he found out about this while he was with us while we were during, while during the race. And he was, uh, for obvious reasons, pretty brokenhearted, but with that camaraderie and that team and th that I was talking about and that trust, the three of us that were in the car were able to support him and, and help him, you know, work his way through it and emotionally deal with it. So we were able to, so I guess that would be the most obvious and prevalent in my memory that we were able to help him as he's having this breakdown missing his missing his team and we were able to still be his team and and help him through it great jordan we have a question from the audience uh, staff commodore bruce monroe do you have a question sir yes uh, but first i want to say what a fantastic program what a great job you guys are doing uh it shows the best of our country and we're very proud of you thank you so the question question is, I'm a veteran myself. I've had a lot of experience with the VA here in San Francisco. It seems to me that your program would dovetail very nicely with what the VA does for veterans. I'm wondering what kind of working relationship, what kind of support do you get from the VA? Uh, right now, as far as I know, we don't really... Our, our generation is so lucky that the community is so involved and you know, the care for their veterans that honestly, I don't, would, I don't even notice the lapse of the VA. Uh, the only time I ever go to the VA is when I need my prosthetic fix. And even that's a really slow process. So I won't be able to, they, for us, as far as healing or anything goes, what the VA would have very little involvement. I mean, it's a government program, you know, so I think the organizations have been the biggest part for our healing and our need, meeting our needs. Yeah, and, and of course, Bruce just said that the VA does a lot for veterans. He can attest to that. And thank you very much, Bruce. Um, I'll, I'll piggyback on that. I spent, like I said, I spent two years at the Palo Alto VA, one of the best systems and places I, I spent during my recovery. The amount of help and support that I got from them was tremendous and their staff. But to piggyback on what Alex said as well, one of the biggest things that I got while I was in Palo Alto was the surrounding community coming bringing us dinners, making us feel welcome, making us feel like we're still part of that community. Even though I'm not from Palo Alto, I felt like I was from Palo Alto. So, Mikhail, um, you put together these experiences where vets jump out of planes and do these dangerous things, go whitewater rafting where they could dry, die, drown, etc. I want you to talk to me about a time, not when you were afraid when you were in combat, but when you were afraid doing this kind of work. Um, you know what? I, I, good and bad. I'm not afraid. And the, the reason I'm not afraid is I think of the positive versus the negative. Uh, you're absolutely right. There's individuals that get hurt. We had, uh, I'll, t I'll tell the story. This year, uh, Matt Sullivan, who is a single leg amputee, he jumped and uh, his parachute didn't open. 
and um, they had to use the uh, the reserve the backup. Right, and so he didn't realize it until later, and then he's like, "Oh man, that that was fun, but it was a different kind of fun, right?" There's uh, <laughs> there, survival fun, right, right. So there are uh, obviously right for us afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun to talk about it afterwards. But absolutely, you know, it's like anything else. There are pros and cons. There are uh, somewhat, you know, quote unquote, dangerous things that we we do. For example, Jordan um, is racing. I don't know if uh, everybody understands, but it's a real race. It's a two two day race, the December first and second at Sonoma Raceway, and we built a car with a roll cage and everything that he and, and a couple other amputee veterans that are going to be racing in. Can something happen? Absolutely. But w they're not going to sit around with their background in the military. They want that adrenaline. They want to feel, quote, unquote, normal. They want to participate and be part of life, be part of enjoy life and, and, and have fun. And so, he, you know, knock on wood, he doesn't get hurt. But, yes, there are there are. Uh, possibilities of individuals getting hurt, and that's just part of life. So, Jordan, um, scary memories of combat. When they come to you, where where do you go? What do you do with those? Um, I actually call Mikhail. So we're, we've become with Range Road. We've become such a tight community that when we're having a bad day, we have that trust to reach out and be like, "Hey, man, I'm having a bad day. Let's go do something." And nine, nine, nine times out of ten, Mikhail's like, all right, I'll meet you at the gym. So I go to the gym, and me and Mikhail put a workout in. And almost guaranteed I'm going to feel better afterwards. And the, Or Alex shows up, and all three of us do it. And then we're, we, we're rebuilding that team again, and it helps overcome that memory or feeling of fear. <clears throat> Can Same I question. touch up on that a little bit? Same uh, question. I'll have you. So, you, uh, you know, like, like Jordan said, uh, a lot of us within the Ranger Road are the amputees, and a lot of us are combat arm guys. Uh, so we know that we've had similar experiences. Sometimes we don't even have to talk about it. Just we kind of know each other and know when somebody's having a hard time. And just being around each other, knowing that, you know what, he's gone through similar experiences or has the same troubles at sometimes just being around each other is, is therapy in its own. Um, so, Mikhail, talk a little bit about the work you're doing in um, – you know, street crime reduction. Talk a little bit about that activity and how does it relate or how are you informed in that work by Ranger Road? So uh, most officers in the San Mateo County area know about Ranger Road, the sheriff departments, uh, the police departments. They know what we're doing. And so a lot of times, you know, unfortunately, veterans are just like anybody else get in trouble. And uh, those individuals that do get in trouble and are able to... Um, um, once they're out of you know the process of being arrested and that sort of thing, they come out and they reach out to Ranger Road. They give them my our information and we're able to, you know, talk to them. Not everybody we can help. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Ranger Road fixes all problems with veterans. It's not true. Uh, we're just that first step in the right direction. We can't help an individual that isn't. Um, trying to help himself. Alex knows and Jordan knows. I have a, a Ranger buddy who has uh, major PTSD and had hard times after a combat situation that happened overseas. And he, he turned to alcohol and um, uh, violence. And so we've tried to help him out. And he says, you know what, man, I want to do this. I'm a, I, I was a ranger. I want to uh, get better, but I can't drop the bottle. So certain things we, um, we try. And then if we cannot, then we streamline them to other uh, nonprofits or organizations that focus on that particular need and so that's his situation within the crime reduction unit we work I work with uh, uh, various gangs and uh, narcotics and that sort of thing and so individuals that we do run into that are veterans and we can assist we we try but it doesn't always um, end in a in a positive way so gangster kids have a similar kind of camaraderie among their, their group and their peer group. And part of what they get out of it is it's a positive social experience for them because they don't belong in schools very well. They don't fit in other environments. But they get to be buddies in this other bad enterprise, gangster. So essentially, how can you help bring those people back from criminal activity by demonstrating you know, positive role model activities such as your own? 
Well, you just mentioned the, you said the right things, being a role model. Um, a lot of times, I'll get, paint a picture, you're driving a car, uh, something happens and the, the car next to you gets really angry at you, pissed off, and they're yelling at you and screaming at you. If you scream back, you're just making the situation worse. If you just look over and smile and nod or wave and just mind your own business, yes, that'll piss them off probably more, but they're, you're fixing a problem. Same thing in this situation. We try to be role models to our uh, veteran community, other individuals like yourselves, that we're doing the right thing. We're trying to do the right thing. And so, say, uh, in, you know, gangs or people committing crime that are ready to transition out of that lifestyle can uh, look at us as, as, as an example. Um, well, they do that, and do they always do that? Uh, no, but it, it is something that we try to um, uh, show a positive um, positive way of doing things within the group. So Alejandro, so when you go through the rehab process, you've got painkiller and drugs, and lots of people get tangled up in medication. Pretty soon they're getting addicted to their medications. Talk to us about how that affects GIs as they recover as well, and how do you, how do you help them get through the potential of being ad ad addicted to painkillers? Uh, I, honestly, I think that was the hardest part of my recovery was getting past the, uh, the narcotic addiction as, of painkillers. Uh, when I first got hurt, you know, and, and they're needed, so it's not a, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. I mean, they're needed. Uh, I know when I got hurt, I got cut off of my pain medication. That It was like five days after I got hurt, and it was one of the worst days that I remember as far as my recovery goes. But it's got to be, it's got to be on your own again. You got to, you know, you got to want to push yourself. Um, I know when I was going through it, you get a lot of anxiety when you, d when you don't take it. And so one of my friends that happened to be a, uh, ha happened to be a pill popper told me, take another pill, take, just take any kind of pill on, uh, ibuprofen or Tylenol just cause it's a mental thing. Right. So you just replace that sensation of taking a pill, I guess. But, uh, I, I don't know. I can't give you any advice of how to, how to kick that habit. It's just something that's gotta be within you. So Jordan, when you are re I'd like to add on to that. Yes, please. That question as well. Yeah. For me, it's it's like any other thing. You find you replace one thing with another. We replace war and the adrenaline that comes from war with the narcotic. So then that's how that's the that's how the addiction works for us. Just replacing one thing with another. So what I did, I found a healthier replacement. I go to the gym every day. I got my personal trainer certification. I train every day, so I found a healthier a healthier addiction that Range Road and Mikhail and guys like that have helped me to see and fulfill. Is there a mindfulness practice at all? Do you guys practice meditating? Do you suggest that to other um, of your participants or, or is it more physical workout? Talk to us about that. I can't speak on the other three or, or Range Road as a whole, but for me personally, I do. I have what? my little app on my phone that I run through and for mindful meditation. Alejandro? I've taught my kids that it. it works for me. Uh, I personally don't do uh, any mindful stuff. Uh, if veterans that are getting out, my advice to them would be to stay active. Don't take a break. A lot of veterans get out of the military and say, I'm going to take a, a year off. or And that's when guys start veering off and doing dumb stuff. And once you start going down that path, they stick to it. So guys getting out, I would tell them to find an organization that you like and stay active and jump right into something new, you know, whether it's going to school or finding a job, don't take that break because that's when, when things get slow is when all the bad memories or all the bad experiences come to light and you start doing dumb stuff. Mikhail, mindfulness? Um, I uh, refer back to working out, uh, staying active, just like Alex uh, had mentioned. Um, that is normal and uh, close to me and that's what I grew up doing and so you know even at times I'm grateful for my wife that puts up with some of the things that I have to deal with but she understands and she sees that hey this guy's having a hard time babe go to the gym so I'll go to the gym I'll, I'll hit up the rest of the Ranger Road guys gals we'll do something we'll work out and um, stay active and that that is a therapy for me question with the audience Mark Lambros Yes, uh, much of your program is about creating programs, activities, and from and for example, like putting a skydiving operation together, is a fair amount of work. 
we're in a yacht club. I didn't hear anything about any sailing uh, programs that you do, let alone the fact that you're reaching many yacht clubs. And if you can do it in one, it can perhaps be duplicated in many. How do you actually go about creating a program and then use that experience to duplicate it to be able to reach more people? Great question, sir. Um, 99% of our programs or events are put together by whether a veteran wants to do something or if we have an individual that has a, a passion um, in, in a certain field. Uh, we put together programs and events based on uh, the funding that we have and the knowledge that we have. If we have an individual that has um, uh, an opportunity for us to get involved within sailing and uh, provide services for our veterans, we would jump on that, put an event together, and make it happen. Um, all the other events that we've put together were because uh, somebody like yourself said, hey, skydiving would be cool. I'll help out. I'll, I'll make, I'll get the ball rolling. We invite the uh, volunteers. We invite our veterans, get them to participate and make the event happen. So maybe we can work something out together, sir. <laughs> like I said before, motorsports, wind sports, I'd love to make something like that happen. I've sailed here at BADS, which is the Bay Area Disabled Sailing. I've done that, I've been a part of that, and it's awesome. I think on Sundays they let disabled vets do it for free. And I, I love doing it. I used to kiteboard. I, I, I would love to be able to help out and, and be a part of that and make that something like that happen. Uh, to also touch on that with what he was saying is we have individuals that are, are passionate about it. I wanted to start the, the racing and doing stuff like that because I, 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 I'm kind of a gearhead or I've learned to be a gearhead. Uh, we met an individual that does the lemons races that we're gonna be doing on Saturday. And he, with the knowledge, helped us get it started so that we could race this weekend. So it wasn't me reaching out to Lemons. It was another individual that had the knowledge and the, the means to help us get it started and get it going. Because I, I, I don't have a race car. I don't know how to build a race car. I want to do it, but I can't do it. So we had somebody that was passionate about it that reached out to us and said, hey, we, I can help you, and helped us get it started. So with all the discussion of camaraderie, it would be uh, wrong for me to not take this opportunity to say that uh, 40 years ago in London, I met a girl who's here today, my dear wife, Barbara Young. Thanks for being here, honey. 40 years ago this month. Um, so, Mikhail, talk to us about, um, you're a goal-driven person. I love your sense of purpose. Give us a sense about what you want to do like by 2020. Give us a goal for Ranger Road for 2020. Absolutely. Uh, so this year alone, uh, we had a budget and we stuck to it and we were able to uh, keep it uh, under $120,000 that we spent on our programs and events. I got to pause. There are 501c3. We can all help them out. Imagine all the work they're doing with $100,000. It's like incredible. This much work with $100,000? Go ahead. Um, there's uh, individuals here in the Bay Area and other, um, you know, Seattle, like he mentioned, the gentleman that uh, races vehicles, they donate their time and um, uh, products to be able to make these things happen. The Freedom Jump, we have tanks. A gentleman uh, uh, that comes out from uh, Petaluma, he brings out tanks and allows individuals to get on the tanks and crush cars and that sort of thing. So... <laughs> Um, it's it's a lot of fun, and a lot of things that we do is just maybe outside the box a little bit, but it's it's different, and that's why people enjoy it. So th uh, moving forward next year, especially moving into uh, starting programs that we're doing in Wall Street, we're trying to do that in, in Balboa Hospital. Uh, we're are, we're trying to reach a goal of two thousand uh, two hundred thousand dollars to be able to use uh, for next year, and with all the veterans and and uh, their family members reaching out to us for assistance, we'd like to minimize the individuals. Um, uh, minimize the individuals who we're not rejecting but telling them to come back next year. Mm -hmm. So a goal that we have is if we can raise $200,000 for this coming up year to be able to use for the programs that we are currently use, uh, doing and starting uh, Balboa Hospital and providing more uh, veterans the opportunity to skydive, uh, Jordan's uh, Range Road Motors, the SCUBA program. Just to piggyback off of that, um, Josh Hodling, he... 
he lives in Lincoln, and uh, he, he now teaches our scuba program. And he, he was teaching uh, individuals out of his garage. So he um, now, with his, the help of his dad, they built a, um, a, a, um, a house, or not a house, a building on their property and that they're going to be uh, using specifically for that now. So we're trying to stretch the dollar as much as we can and assist as many veterans as possible. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. It does. So um, talk about women in Ranger Road. What about the opportunity for a woman who's been injured? Again, it's open to anybody. There's no, uh, there's no guidelines. Uh, my wife is a veteran. She served for nine years, and she took part in the skydive event. The, uh, I, believe, I met Mikhail in 2015. I believe she did it in 2016. Uh, and she is part of an organization called the Woman Veterans Alliance, and we have – skydived a whole bunch of women at a, a not, some of the her peers in that organization uh, i believe it was last year mikhail left five slots open just for that organization itself so again it doesn't matter what your status is whether you're injured whether you're male female ranger is open to anybody yeah we work with men and women of you know all branches of the military our free or our um, operation gut check we had five or six uh disabled veteran women who we carried in litter carries or pushed the wheelchair to to uh, complete the race so we reach out to everybody and assist as many as as we can so jordan where were your tours in military uh actually it's that story i served for i was in i was active duty for seven years Spent most of my time in training, and it was my first deployment to Afghanistan. I was there eight days before I got shot. Eight days? Eight days into my first deployment. I've never been more excited in my life to get there, and I get there, and I'm there eight days. Yes, sir. Question from the audience. Thanks, Ron. Gentlemen, thank you for your service. We appreciate it. you got to protect this big old ass. <laughs> thank you. Anyway, just um, in general, do you have a average number uh, cost per function per individual skydiving or whatever? We do not have an average yeah. because uh, uh, to sponsor a individual for yeah. the freedom jump will be different than uh, scuba diving. So right. what would it be for the freedom jump? So hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, Per person? We, we try to raise $2,000 per person, and okay. the reason being is depending on where they're coming from. If they're local, it's obviously a lot cheaper, right. but if they're fly we're flying them in and putting them in the hotel, it's a two-night two day, two night event right. because we do a barbecue and other fees that are uh, included in that. Okay, so if you list, do you have a website to post? Yes, sir. We have a website. Okay. I'll, I have my business cards here okay. um, to be able to so – RangerRoad.org? Correct, RangerRoad.org. Okay, thank you. You're on. We'll, we'll your people. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Wonderful. You, Wonderful. So, Alejandro, where were you? Where were your tours of duty? I did four tours, a uh, total of 42 months in combat, two in Iraq and two in Afghanistan. Uh, my first tour was a year long. My second tour was 15 months long, both in Iraq. Uh, my third tour was another year long, and then my the year I got hurt, I was three months into my fourth deployment. So, when you see World War II vets that also were in Europe or in the Pacific Theater. Uh, talk to me a little bit about um, the fact that you guys are putting together a big program like this, and sometimes a lot of the Vietnam vets didn't benefit from having the initiative that McKellen and you guys have created for them. Talk to me about how welcoming they are to be a part of your activity. The Vietnam vets, Korean vets, World War II vets. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have, a, a, again, a core group of Vietnam vets that have gotten very involved. Uh, I think I was the first one that brought up to Mikhail, hey, we have some Vietnam vets that are trying to go skydiving with us. And so Mikhail being Mikhail, he's like, yeah, let's go. He has a hard time telling anybody no. But uh, anyways, uh, we had five Vietnam veterans skydive with us last year. And one thing you'll get from them is how they didn't have these type of opportunities. And so finding an organization that is open to them is very, uh, it's very touching to them. Arnie. You know? Arnie. Julia. Yes, <clears throat> very few questions from the, from the web, but lots of praise for you. But I do have one thing which says, count me in to volunteer for a sailing boating event for the Ranger Road Program, Winter Light Air. Uh, this is Jennifer Dunbar. Good on plus, you, Jen. <laughs> Good on you, Jen. Yeah. yeah. Plus, plus spectator boats, et cetera. Awesome, inspirational Wednesday Yachtsman lunch. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. And so let's see other hands for people who can, will take vets out on their boats for sure. You'll see many more folks. Uh, you found a new home uh, for such inspirational programs. We're really happy to be a uh, uh, part of your activities. Um, this has been the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon, live from the St. Francis Yacht Club. Our guests today have been Mikhail Vinikoff and Alejandro. Um, Alejandro, I'm going to say your last name, Jacarel. Hurry, I'm really good at that. Did you notice? And Jordan Stevenson, all of Ranger Road. Thank you very, very much. Uh, and with that, the Wednesday Yawning Luncheon meeting is adjourned. Good on you, mates. Good on you. Terrific. Good going, Jordan.